Good evening, gospel revolutionaries around the whole world. This is Michael Wilborn Williams coming to you live with the new centerpiece. <laughs> I uh, uh, really enjoyed taking this vase in that I've uh, owned for about 25 years from something that I bought in Arizona. And uh, they, uh, I, like I said, I went to Hobby Lobby and picked all of this out and uh, took it to them and had them to the florist uh, f called Four Seasons Florist. If you're ever in Clarksville and you need uh, floral arrangements, uh, the uh, girls there are very much experts. So uh, this is going to be our uh, view that you're going to have. I've got to get some curtains up there. I don't like that. So <laughs> anyway, Setting aside my uh, uh, lack of uh, decorating experience, uh, we are going to continue on with the gospel. I'm probably going to get in way above my pay grade here tonight. There's so many things that are interesting uh, me now and are interesting in my conversations with our fellow gospel revolutionary, uh, Ethan uh, Massengill, who is uh, serving in the United States Air Force in uh, Milan, uh, Italy. And um, uh, so uh, he and I, we actually do talk quite a bit, and uh, he's quite a brainiac. He doesn't think so, but he's got uh, 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 quite a thinking uh, uh, brain going on there. So we get into discussions. Others might, uh, well, I, I don't think anybody would find them boring. They're amazing. Uh, the, the issue of the gospel is so vitally important. It's, um, uh, it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation is for the mind, the brain, the soul, the emotions, whatever, um, I'm starting just to call it the psyche, just to kind of make it kind of more all-encompassing. Um, the, the, its ability to be the power of God to the saving of the psyche is held exclusively in the accuracy of its telling because the gospel is now a story and only a story, but is also nothing less than the power of God. Think about that. The gospel is a story and it's only a story. It's no more than a story, but it is also nothing less than the power of God. So it's important to get the story right. And that's all we're saying here at the GR is uh, let's get the story right. Let's look at this. Let's not come up with assumptions and uh, lead people to become discouraged about finding uh, the truth that is contained within the law and within the scriptures and the Hebrew scriptures. But instead, let's uh, let's search and let's let's find out. Uh, I, I think we've come to a point to where that our religion. Our gospel, our science are all converging in a very unique way. Uh, we've come to a point, uh, you guys know I have a uh, great interest in, in physics. I'm a, in way over by my pay grade. Uh, but uh, the thing that has become interesting to me, because I, I do have people who are knowledgeable of these things to ask questions to, uh, and even people who are directly connected to uh, the recent um, uh, very powerful thing that has happened with uh, uh, achieving fusion. Um, uh, I have direct access to a person who uh, was directly involved in that. And so I get to ask questions. Um, I have friends who are nuclear physicists uh, who are studying to be attorneys. <laughs> it's like, I don't know where I get these friends from. Um, but, um, uh, anyway, it's important to ask questions. It doesn't mean that my answers are correct, but I never will forget, uh, in years past, I cleared up an issue about relativity, um, 
uh, because I ask a question of someone who, like I said, they had a hand in uh, the uh, recent uh, most dramatic uh, thing that has happened on planet Earth, and that is fusion. People are downplaying it and everything else, but uh, they did that with the telephone. So <laughs> uh, uh, there's always naysayers about everything, especially if the pocketbook is going to be affected. And um, this is going to change, has the potential to change the world economy in a way that we don't even have the ability to even uh, comprehend or to even talk about yet. Uh, but one of the things that I asked was about this, uh, uh, because I had found this uh, book on quantum mechanics. I had people telling me I was teaching quantum mechanics. And so I got to sit on their front porch and talk with them. And I asked them about this issue of um, uh, quantum mechanics. Uh, they, I, I love everything. I love time travel. That's one of my favorite things. But I love it as a form of entertainment, not a form of learning truth. <laughs> uh, Outlander is uh, one of my favorites. I've been through it. I'm actually going through it my third time now all the way through uh, over these last few years. It's uh, It really is fascinating. It has a lot of history in it also, which is very fascinating. It's a lot of family history actually that's in it for me. Uh, but we were sitting there on the porch and I asked about this issue of uh, quantum mechanics. I hope you'll get the connection between the subjects here in just a moment. And uh, he explained to me that the uh, that quantum mechanics is a subatomic theory. It's not even a fact yet, even in the subatomic world. And it has to do with the operations of the, uh, around the neutron and the different levels of orbits around the neutron, uh, around the neutron and, uh, the skipping from one of these levels, uh, to the other of four different dimensions, which has never been observed, but it is a theory. Now, people have taken that theory and applied it to this uh, Newtonian or atomic world. So we have the subatomic and the atomic or Newtonian world, if you will. Uh, and if I get all this wrong, I just plead ignorance, okay? So, uh, but uh, because we have uh, accepted this, and this all has to do with light and the, the, the speed of light and things like that, but... Uh, uh, people just cannot accept that light may be a constant, that it is not something that travels at a speed. Uh, they say they can measure it because of a couple of things that I'm not going to take time to go into it, but one because of the waves that it produces. But the issue is that waves are usually uh, involved in something because of its the interruption to it, not because it in of itself is a wave. Uh, you go to the beach, you got waves coming in because the shore is interfering. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's just a very basic thing. But what has happened then is that we have taken quantum mechanics that is not provable. Yet I can, we can disprove it. Uh, I mean, goodness, I can disprove quantum uh, mechanics myself. Uh, I, I can prove that to you by applying Newtonian physics and prove to you in a laboratory that uh, quantum mechanics is nothing more than a theory, just as it is in the subatomic world. Some of you are wondering, what the hell have I tuned into here? <laughs> Uh, but then what we've done is because there are scientists that have accepted this theory, and then they call it theoretical science. Uh, do you realize that that's oxymoron, <laughs> theoretical science? Science is not theoretical, and theoretical has not yet become science. It could, but until it does, there is no such thing that I can see that would be theoretical science unless it's the study of the theoretical. 
Uh, but what we've done from there is taken that and applied it to the function uh, such as gravity and all of those things that are uh, physics here on this earth. And we're trying to project that to the worlds and universes that exist. Out of that, computers generate black holes. Where do black holes come from? We've never seen a black hole. <laughs> Just like you've never seen uh, the uh, quantum levels of the uh, subatomic world. It is a theory. And this is also a theory about black holes that swallows up light and everything because we're applying Newtonian physics and, uh, and um, the uh, subatomic physics to the outer world, which would tell us that mass, the larger the mass, the greater the gravity, therefore it would eventually collapse in on itself and just turn into a black hole. That's if all the physics works out there, just like it does here. <laughs> I am of the suspicion that the physics uh, a million miles from here does not work like the physics does here. It might, we never know. Uh, let's wait to get there, we'll find out. Uh, all of that to say, uh, you know, they say that light travels at a speed. Well, does dark travel at a speed? Uh, you know, uh, God said, let there be light. He didn't say, let there be light, and then it traveled. <laughs> Uh, but he said, let there be light, and there was light. And uh, uh, he separated the light from the darkness, two constants, two things that exist uh, uh, in a constant state. And this is gospel-y to me, because that's what we have here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where Paul is talking about the different bodies. He said, everything has a different body. He said, there's fishes, little bee fishes that swim in the sea. They have a body and, you know, bears have a body and uh, we get right on down to the celestial and the terrestrial has a body. And he's saying, don't get these confused. And until what he uh, leads us up to is that the celestial and the terrestrial has become one, which is outside of physics altogether. <laughs> one might call it miraculous. So we, we have this incredible description by Paul in 1 Corinthians. We also have, uh, and he starts this out uh, by saying in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And uh, many of our friends totally discredit the scriptures and therefore they do discredit the cross. Don't, uh, no need and uh, you can write if you want to, uh, you can complain. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. If you discredit the scriptures, you have already discredited uh, the cross of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul also said in the book of Romans, uh, where he's talking about uh, the way that God did things, he said, Nay, O man, verse 20 of chapter 9, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to the thing formed, Why, has you, why have you made me this way? Hath not the, uh, the potter power over the clay uh, of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and the other to dishonor? And uh, Paul goes on to explain this and then, of course, explain the power of how Jesus intervened into this world. There's been two cosmoses, two worlds that have existed in the scriptures, and that's the world that was created by God before, uh, uh, before all things, and then the recreation of a new world that started at the cross. And who art thou, O oh man, to say? Why did God make that world that way and this world this way? Why was that one under wrath and this one is not? Uh, you can't take the physics of this current gospel and apply it to the physics 
of the old covenant gospel are those that were under Adam. Adam's gospel, the Adam sub, sub, I'm not trying to be funny or spiritual here. I just, I'm just funny. <laughs> of course, you all know that. Uh, but we cannot take that world and assume that it is the way this one is, where there's peace between God and man. In fact, it is declared very uh, consistently throughout the scriptures and by all the writers in the Bible that there was a time when God's wrath was abiding upon the earth. And uh, then a whole new world came. But as long as that world existed, it existed and uh, operated as that world was made to operate. And now that this one has been recreated and God has literally brought the celestial and the terrestrial together, all of it. Daniel and I are teaching on this. You better stay tuned. You might miss something very important. Well, I don't know how much you got out of this, but the fact of it is, is that you live in a whole new world and the physics of this gospel works now. Don't try to apply it to the world before the cross because you will negate the very work of the cross that gave us this incredible new world to live in.